Okay. Let's test this thing. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, if you follow me on Instagram, and let's be honest, you should, then you know that I'm building a CNC plasma table. And this is the plasma cutter that I plan to use for that. Now, this is only a 30 amp output unit, but that should be sufficient for all the kinds of work that I plan to do here in the shop. Now, I originally acquired this plasma cutter for a different project last year that ultimately didn't happen, or at least hasn't happened yet but this machine is still really kind of ideal for what I'm trying to do with the plasma table. So first of all, it will run on the 30 amp, 240 volt circuit I have here in the shop. I don't have a 50 amp welder circuit. In fact, the panel for the entire house, including the shop, is only 100 amps. So I've got a 30 amp circuit and this will run easily on that. I think it requires something around 20 amps at 240 volts to get its full output. The other thing about this unit that makes it ideal for this use is that it has no high frequency start. It has a pilot arc, but no high frequency. And that's good because the high frequency start can just wreak havoc with CNC electronics. Now the one thing about this that isn't ideal is it does not have the control inputs for the computer to fire the torch and to monitor the arc voltage. But we're gonna fix that. We're gonna install those controls on this machine today. To use this uh, plasma cutter or any plasma cutter on a CNC table, we need a couple of things. The first is we need a way to, for the computer to fire the torch. Now this machine comes with a hand torch. In fact, it, it's not it can't be disconnected, it's an integral part of the machine. This was just intended for hand use. So you get a hand trigger, safety trigger, so you have to flip up this and then you can pull the trigger and that will fire the torch. Of course it's not plugged in right now. Um, but of course the CNC machine can't do that, but the way this works is there's just a circuit with a couple of extra wires in the cable that goes back to trigger the firing sequence with the pilot arc and then ultimately establishing the arc to the workpiece. And so we need to tap into that circuit and provide a way for the CNC machine to fire it. And fortunately, the controller has a relay with dry contacts. So all we have to do is find the right spot in the circuit, tap this cable into it, and then connect the other end to the controller and it can fire the torch. The other thing that's needed is a torch height control. So to control the, the table's not gonna be completely flat, the material's not gonna be completely flat, and we're not gonna be adjusting this thing like we would a milling machine or a router to be perfectly flat. So we need a way for the torch to follow this contours of the material. And if the material's wavy, the torch needs to go up and down as it goes. Now the way that's done is with a torch height control. And the way that works is by measuring the voltage of the arc. You can think of the arc as a resistor. The machine is going to maintain the current that you've set. So if the arc gets longer, it's going to have to increase the voltage to maintain it. If the arc gets shorter, the current would increase, so it will decrease the voltage so that it will decrease the current and maintain it at the current that you've set. And so because of that, all you have to do is monitor the voltage that the machine is putting out to the arc, and that will allow you to monitor the height of the torch. Now, of course, that's a very large, dangerous voltage that is not gonna work well with the CNC electronics. So they've provided in the Langmuir Systems Kit a couple of high voltage probe wires that we can connect up to the actual torch um, arc voltage inside the unit. And then those come out to a voltage divider. So you have the high voltage input, this divides it down. It's a resistive divider with uh, some capacitive filtering and it'll divide that down as 73 to one and then provide a low voltage output that goes to the CNC controller so it can monitor the torch voltage, hence the torch height. And we just need to open up the machine and connect these cables and we should be good to go. But before we open up the machine and void our warranty, and yes, this will definitely void the warranty, let's talk just a minute here about safety. 
I am in no way proposing that you do this with your own equipment. That is up to you and the risk of that is on you. This is not a safe thing to do. There are a lot of potential hazards here and if you're not comfortable with that and you don't have uh, confidence in your ability to manage that risk, then this project is probably not for you. You're better off buying the 45 amp or some other unit that has the controls pre-installed. So this is not a how-to, this is a what did. I'm gonna show you what I did. If you would like to follow along and do something similar with your unit, you're doing so at your own risk. Let's talk a little bit about what those risks are. So first of all, this is a high voltage power supply. The input to this is gonna be 240 volts AC. It's going to rectify that to DC so that you can multiply that by another 1.4. And so you're talking about north of 300 volts DC with enough power to deliver the 30 amps that this thing will cut. That is totally sufficient to kill you. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna die, and if I do, go ahead and edit this part out of the video before you post. So that's the danger inside the cabinet, and that's gonna most certainly be filtered in capacitors, which means that even after you unplug it, there's potential for that energy to still be stored in the unit, and it could still be present. So after I open it, I'm gonna go over all of the high voltage connections with a multimeter first and make sure that those capacitors really have drained. They should, but I'm gonna check to be sure. Now, the second thing about this is that it produces a high voltage output. And that output is normally safely contained within the torch, and you know that the only dangerous point is the pointy end here where the fire comes out. Uh, but we're gonna actually be bringing that high voltage out of the case on these probe wires. And when we do that, you know, this thing will happily establish an arc across the ends of these probe wires. So we're adding another element of danger because we're creating another point where that voltage could escape, get into your body or into something else and cause serious problems. Now the third thing that might not be quite as obvious is that because this has a hand torch, it's a totally normal thing to take this out of the machine, hold it in your hand, and use it. In fact, we'll do that. We'll uh, not only be using this 100% on the plasma table, we'll be using it to rough cut material, to size, to cut down sheets, or uh, you know, do other operations by hand. And what may not be totally evident is this switch today is the only way to fire this torch. So as long as I don't press that switch, it's not gonna fire. But we are wiring in a second way to fire this torch and a way for that to be done under software control by a computer. So what that means is even though the safety is closed on this, if I'm handling this torch, I should assume that it could fire at any time. Now interestingly, as I've looked around uh, in the forums, I did find a post from somebody who at least appears to be associated with hypertherm and their message was very, very clear. This machine is not designed for CNC plasma table use. Don't do it. The duty cycle of the machine is not designed for that. It doesn't have a machine torch. It's dangerous. You should under no circumstances do this. However, we're aware that a bunch of people are doing it and it's really easy to do, so I tried it and it works great. So that's the official word from Hypertherm. Well, as official as we're gonna get is, whatever you do, don't do it, but it's really easy and it'll probably work fine. Now the case on this thing is really easy to open. Don't do it, it's really easy to open. Uh, there's just two number two Phillips screws here. And we'll just back those out. And then the ends pop off of this thing and screw fell back down in the hole. Let me see if I can bind it by pulling sideways. There we go, then we can back it up. There we go, and the handle just pops off. Then the ends can pop open and we should be able to just work the sheet metal out. There's a fan shroud behind this grill that kind of catches on it. See the louvers are pressed in and they kind of catch in this uh, fan shroud. So I've moved some cameras around so you can see in here a little bit better. 
we can see the air connector on the back comes in through a, an air filter system and it's got an automatic drain line that goes out the bottom, which is good. So this will actually collect water and separate that out of the air. Uh, they say that you should really run this thing with a separate dryer, but um, for my use in this shop, uh, I think this is gonna be sufficient. There's a regulator here, and then there is a pressure transducer, a pressure sensor switch here that senses the air pressure, and that's wired up so that the plasma cutter can tell if air is connected and it won't fire without it. Then the, that two air tubing comes across to a solenoid and then down to the torch output so that it can fire the air. So all you gotta do is connect air to this thing and it manages everything else on its own. Now if we look at the wires that come out of the torch, there are a few of them. There are three white wires that are all in parallel and they come up here and they come to this terminal right here, this stud. And so this stud is the actual torch electrode. We can verify that by uh, disassembling the torch and using a continuity tester. So we take the tip off of this and connect one probe to that and the other to the end of the torch handle. We have continuity to, through to the electrode. So we know that that is the firing tip. Uh, so this will be the negative side and we can connect our terminal onto that for the negative side of the voltage. The positive side of the voltage actually goes to the work clamp. It's commonly called the ground clamp, but it's actually the work clamp. Let me reassemble this so that I don't lose everything. Now the other wires that come out of here come up to here and they're in this bundle. There's a red wire that goes to here. I honestly don't know what that's for. And these three come in and the orange and the purple wires connect over to the PC board and those are actually the wires for the switch. We'll connect onto those and verify the switch function as well. well let me turn this around. Now on this side, we can see the workpiece clamp comes in right here. The cable comes in and it comes directly to that terminal. So I can do the same kind of validation here. Let me just connect this clamp onto my probe and then the other probe I can come down and verify. Yep, so that's the connection to the other side, which is the work clamp, which will be positive. So we'll connect the positive wire there. Now for the torch firing, the wires that we talked about from the other side, the purple and the orange, those come around, there's a connector here, and we can see where it's soldered into the board. Now interestingly enough, the traces come out from that and go to two little rings here that are open and could be soldered to, and they are labeled torch start. Go figure. So if I actually put my probes in those two rings and bring this over and pull the trigger, it's just closing the connection between those two. Now I could just solder on to those two rings, but I don't really want to solder on this board, especially since it's got this kind of rubber conformal coating on it. Instead, I'm just going to tap into the wires using the connectors that came with the uh, Crossfire um, torch height controller kit. And we will check again after we do that to make sure that I've really traced everything, but I'm pretty sure that I have. And in fact, if you dig into the Langmuir forums, there is a post here by Lucali um, that has photos showing all of this, where the raw negative voltage wire connects, where the raw positive wire connects, and then there's another one that uh, I don't have right here that indicates that the purple and the orange are indeed the correct wires. And so we'll go ahead and move forward with this. This was a good plan, but I've verified it all individually myself, because you never know um, if this is correct, but you also never know if they've actually made some kind of a design change. Now, I've got to find a way to bring the wires into this thing. I'd like to bring them through the back panel, and uh, some of the designs that I've seen online, people have just sort of drilled holes through the louvers, but I really don't want that. I want it to be solidly anchored with strain relief. So looking at this, the uh, workpiece clamp in the front, the power cable on the back, they're all using these cable glands, and I have a whole connect collection of these in different sizes, and so I'm gonna use cable glands uh, on the back. It'll make it look just like the factory install, which should be nice and clean. 
and I've got a PG9 size for the um, for the high voltage wires, and I've got a PG7 for the control wire. And I've selected a couple of spots back here, and I'm just going to drill holes through the case. Now, I would really like to put these, you know, down lower, but there aren't a lot of good places on here. There's some flat space down here, but this has got the very nice diagram with showing all the torch consumables. Um, I'd love to put them. Uh, I'd love to put this one down low next to the switch so it's not up obstructing the power switch at all. Unfortunately, on the inside, the PC board is right there. Um, and so I've kind of picked some compromised locations and I'll just go ahead and put holes for these in using a step bit. And that's the back panel, nice and secure. Let me clean up this mess, turn it around, and let's make our connections. And these are soldered, tinned, and since I'm gonna be putting these into crimps, I am removing the tinned section. Now these, these wires are just for sensing, they're not gonna carry any power, any current, so it doesn't really matter. But definitely, if you have current carrying wires, that are going to be crimped, do not tin them. You can, uh, the, the connections will, it, it won't hold the compression over time if the wire's tinned before it's crimped. And so on a power handling connection, like, ask me how I know, a heater on a 3D printer, those connections will heat up over time and will fail and will overheat and melt the connector. So I've experienced that, I don't recommend it. And incidentally, that is an eight millimeter nut. Okay, so there's our high voltage wires connected. The last thing we need to do is actually connect into the purple and the orange wires here. And then to connect to these wires, Langmuir has provided these crimp on uh, insulation displacement connectors. Now, I am not, in general, a huge fan of these, but in this application, in a dry shop environment, it's gonna be just fine. So what ends up happening is you put the wire in here, this crimps on and cuts through the insulation, and then there's a spit place for this spade connector to come in the back. So I've got those on the orange and purple wires, and we should be able to then just connect these spade connectors to them. And I will connect up my multimeter to it, and then test by firing the torch, or pulling the switch. Looks like that's right. So if we short across this connector, or the CNC controller does it, it'll short across the orange and purple wires, and should fire the torch. And we've got our black connected to the terminal and the red goes down on the other side. So I think all that's left here is for me to just, uh, I gotta put this insulation sheet back in and button it up. And we should be ready to take this over to the CNC machine and do some testing. Now as long as we've got this here on the bench, we might as well test it. So I'm going to set this to voltage DC, and these are just probe inputs like any other. So I should be able to just set this up, set it someplace here where you can see it too. Okay, and now let me hook up some air and some power and put on my safety glasses here and we'll fire the torch and we should see a positive voltage there. Okay, I'm showing 0 0.2 volts DC, just for kicks and giggles, make sure there's no AC on it, yep. And then I will fire the torch and we'll see what that does. And you know, I know I'm just dry firing this thing, I know I'm just using the pilot arc, 
That's not ideal, it is wearing the consumables, but this is just for a quick test and we will see what happens. Yep. Okay, you saw that pop up too. I saw 139 volts DC, which sounds to me like uh, I could check the manual, but that sounds appropriate for an open circuit voltage on a plasma cutter like this. So, and it was positive. I'll check the video to make sure it was positive. I was kind of paying attention to the fire, making sure I didn't hurt anyone, mostly me. Um, but uh, I'll check that in the video and make sure that that was okay. But I think we are good to go. We can go hook this up to the, uh, hook this up to the controller. Now, of course, this doesn't go to the controller. This goes to the uh, voltage divider and then the PV output here goes to the controller and the cable was provided for that and we'll hook that up and give it a try. I, um, this comes with a strip of Velcro to stick this on someplace, but I don't know exactly where I want it. You know, we've got all the graphics on this side. There's potentially a space over on the other side if that's not in the way where this gets installed. I've seen people stick them on the back, but again, there's not a good place that doesn't cover the vent holes. Uh, so I'm just gonna stick it here for now. That does, uh, of course, make it hard to use the handle, but I'm not gonna be using this in a portable application, so it should be fine. Let's go hook this up on the plasma table and see how it runs. I have the plasma cutter now set up over here on the mill. Here's the torch height control with the high voltage leads coming in, the low voltage lead coming out, going to the torch height control here, and then here is the wire for the plasma fire coming out and connected to the torch on off of the controller. I've gone through all the tests here to make sure that the electronics are actually insulated from the case. I've got the work clamp connected to the underside of the table. I've got the torch mounted in the uh, torch holder, so we should be ready to test. Now I already assembled the plasma table itself. I'm sorry I didn't film it. Um, actually, I'm not sorry. I got to spend a Sunday afternoon in the shop just casually going through the instructions and building something and I uh, just enjoyed my afternoon without the cameras rolling. Uh, the documentation for this table is really good and so if you can follow instructions, uh, it's, I wasn't gonna add any value by uh, making a video from it. This is the Langmuir Systems Crossfire and I did get the extension, so this is a 24 by 30 work envelope. So it's big enough to do reasonable work but it's also small enough that it'll tuck away into the corner of my shop. And for the record, uh, this is not sponsored. I paid my own money full price and bought this. I chose this table because it's small, because I can tuck it away, and I figured that this is simple enough that if I do run into any problems or inadequacies in it, if it's not rigid enough, I ought to be able to uh, modify it pretty easily. But as it turns out, it is pretty rigid, so I'm not really concerned about that anymore. So I've got the mechanics all set up. So I can just jog this around and the whole thing actually runs quite smoothly through the entire range of motion. And uh, all we have left to do now is just test the torch firing. Everything else should be good to go. So we'll come into the software here and I can see the machine is linked up up here in the corner. It says height control L8 LSTHC version 1.1. So it's found the torch height control module. I'm seeing the live voltage reading 0.0, .0 volts, which is what it should be since it's not running right now. Um, and so let's go through the test sequence. Just click the test button here. Uh, so this is just introduction explaining what it's gonna do, that it's going to uh, dry fire the torch. Please read the instructions and pay attention, no problem. Okay, so uh, this is all just telling me to make sure that it's set up properly, that I have uh, everything hooked up, that I have a good air supply, and that it's connected correctly. It is. Okay, jog it to the top of its travel, and it's just about there. And it's at least one inch above the table. It is. Continue. So now it's going to check the resting voltage. It's within the acceptable range. Well, it should be. Continue to the live voltage test. Okay, more warnings. It's going to fire the torch. Make sure it's in a safe place. It is. In the next step, you'll hit the torch fire button and then hit a button once the arc is on. Be sure to wear proper eye protection, and I have proper eye protection right here. Okay. 
Let's test this thing. Okay, live test result, 142.2 volts. That's similar to the 130 something that we measured with a voltmeter. So I think we're good. Well, that is what I had hoped to accomplish today. We've got the plasma cutter wired up and connected into the CNC system. So the software is under control of firing the torch and is able to read back the voltage for height control. So I think we're pretty much ready to go. Now, I still need to spend some time figuring out the software tool chain, and I've got to get the post processor set up in Fusion 360 and get some things designed, and we can actually give this thing a test run. Probably should also fill the water table with water before I just start cutting anything in anger. And we will do that in a future video. As soon as I figure it out, you'll be the first to see it. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.